Now, as we go inside, we see what China typically does. Um, actually, when I spoke to this uh, client, uh, he explained to me, I came highly recommended, and I really do appreciate that from Marcus. And uh, I just, we were going over some details, and he said he just did not want to take a chance knowing what the electronics are built like and seeing some videos in the past that I've presented. He did his research. He called Gecko Drive, spoke to Marcus, and that's when he was directed to me. And we started breaking it down. And it was interesting because I didn't even see these pictures until recently. And this is exactly what we have. We have two 48-volt switching power supplies here. I believe this is a 5-volt power supply here. We can, of course, see that we're using tandem terminal outputs here, which is a definitive no-no. We've got tam tandem terminal outputs here, which is a definitive no-no. Uh, we are running 11 amp units, which means that this system is actually running 22 amps at 40, uh, 48 volts, which is really, really direct overkill and a lot of EMI being produced by two of these units. Um, why I say that is, as you guys become more familiar with building your own system, this is an IDS system. And I'm going to cover that in a second. But what I want to discuss first is this power supply issue. There's this misconception that I'm seeing done consistently because I'm getting lots of questions on it. That guys building their system assume that a stepper motor is like a, a typical DC or AC motor in that it requires a large amount of amps and a buffer and all this neat stuff. Let's go over the basics. 98% of you are going to be wiring your, seri your motors in series. What's known as series as far as a stepper motor, a bipolar stepper motor typically has four leads. That's what we generally see on the market. There are uh, different revisions of motors, some with six, some with eight. But typically we see the bipolar series type configuration, which again is a four lead stepper motor. In which case, the actual power supply requirement as far as amperage for each drive is only one third of the drive's actual amp rating. So when you think about that, that kind of transforms dramatically how you build your system. First of all, using two power supplies like this I've discussed in the past, you're just really just you know, bombarding the system with excess energy in terms of EMI. And then on top of that, you're never going to use this amount of amperage, ever even close. So there's nothing in here that requires that. The VFD is certainly not running off this. This is just powering the drives themselves. Uh, they could have mitigated um, the secondary power supply completely. What that tells me, once again, is that they lack knowledge of what they're talking about.